So I've made a list of 25 cars I'm going to share with you that I'm going to mostly own. B, that's very desirable. I like the cars that are different. Bang. How different is that? Hey, you know me by now, I'm just a massive petrol head. I've got to do this. I've got to do this while I can. You've got one opportunity. I'm going for it. Italians, I don't know how to do it. They have a, have a deal with the devil or they've got some little pixies or... Oh, all right, okay, that'll do. Hi, all, A from Rev Monkey here. Now, this is particularly exciting. It's something I've decided on literally in the last week. Discussing with my son Jake, you might have seen a few videos, equally a car nut. And it's about driving all the dream cars that I ever wanted to drive or own, or mostly own, in fact. Before it's too late, before I'm just old enough to not enjoy it anymore. So I've made a list of 25 cars I'm going to share with you that I'm going to mostly own, or drive, but mostly own. As you may know, currently got a Ferrari 430 manual Spider, uh, which actually never was actually a dream Ferrari of mine. It's just that I recognise it as being a last manual, so I wanted to get it. Uh, I've got Lotus of Samira. I've got a Porsche 94 Carrera GT, video on that recently, just picked it up, still in the garage, still waiting to find out everything that's wrong with it, and a Bentley uh, convertible. I've done a video on all of those, so you can feel free to have a look on the channel and see them. Now, 25 cars, so let's get into it. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's get into the nitty gritty, exciting part and go through these cars. Interesting to see what your thoughts are. Which of these cars would you definitely wish to drive or own? And what cars do you think I might be missing, given the cars that I've gone for? There's a very clear pattern. They're all fun, exciting, highly desirable cars, as one would expect on the dream car list. So I've created a spreadsheet. Links below, so you can check it out yourself. Won't be able to edit it, but have a look at it. Cars all the way down here, so you can see them here. You can see them on the actual models. What the target prices will be. Now, a lot of you will think, well, some of these prices are inaccessible, unattainable. Um, most in order to trade that won't be true. What I'll be looking to do is snipe a private sell, maybe service it, get up a spec, and hope then to sell it at the same price or 500 or a grand. I don't want to be greedy. I just want to be able to buy and sell all these cars using my pot of money. Uh, and then eventually I'll just settle on one or two cars that hopefully I'll keep for a long time. Although, <laughs> knowing me, that's unlikely. Um, and some of these target prices can be definitely achieved at auction sites. There's five auction sites I visit on a regular basis. In fact, that's how I bought the Porsche 294 Carrera GT. Uh, the others I bought on Auto Trader. Um, it's got, so the target price, the main requirements, mostly it's mileage, but it might be down to color and secondary requirements and then a kind of preference, which is mostly kind of color or it's had certain things done with it. So first up, Alpha 4C. This is it. I went for a Spider. I think it's just open top motoring. If you've got the option, is always the way to go for the overall experience. The hair in your hair, the hair in your hair, the air in your hair, <laughs> the uh, seeing all the sky above you. You just feel all that noise. You feel the engine a bit better. So all in all, it's just a better experience. That's the only one I'd go for. Typically, there's one here at 50,000, 7,000 miles. So that would be a contender for me straight away. I only want red or yellow, but that's mostly only what is available. There are blacks and silvers and a few whites. Next up, Alfa Romeo Force uh, SZ. Now, none of these are on Auto Trader or Piston Heads for sale at the moment. Occasionally they come up. They go for around between thirty and 40,000. Some are pictured quite highly. But I'd be hoping to pick one off privately or via an auction, which is probably my best chance, actually. But as you see, it's that inc it's, it's incredibly ugly that it's beautiful. Incredibly rare, incredibly rare car. See a bigger picture here. And the back, the back's like the maddest of all. <laughs> oh, dear. Look at that flipping neck. I mean, it's just... But it's so unusual. What a fantastic car. It's an Alfa Romeo. Everybody's got to know an Alfa Romeo once in their life at least. I've already had one. Uh, more than that, between another one. Right, so to me, that's very desirable. I like the cars that are different. Bang. How different is that? 
and not silly money. Next up, obviously a quadrifolio. I love that metallic green, but the older ones where I'll be looking to snipe them around 30,000, clearly not going to get the green. wasn't made in that colour at that point. Mostly black, red, silver and red. They do the competency only red, which is the right metallic one, which is lovely. Cracking car. A rival to the uh, C63 edition 507 that I had. So that's on my list. Next up, I'll go through them quite quickly. Alpine, obviously a, a lower priced, lower powered, but lighter version of the Lotus Amira. And also half the price at its lowest prices. So if you can pick one of these up, IDD Blue for about 40,000. I don't think you can go wrong. Sit there, wait till you get the car, drive it, sell it. That's my principle throughout all of these. If I particularly fall in love, I'd contemplate having it longer or even keeping it. But it's supposed to be a great car. I'm probably bound to enjoy it. The looks are for everybody's taste. It's got the weirdest sort of front light setup, isn't it? Um, but that is actually a kind of... It's reminiscent of the original with its kind of lights that are on the front there. All in all, it's a cool car. I mean, every car I've selected would certainly make the cool car, I believe, of Jeremy Clarkson's wall in the original Top Gear. Let me know if you think these are cool or not. If you think one of them is uncool, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, cracking little car. A car at any keen driver, a, you know, a car who loves kind of the Lotus and Ferraris and the Porsches, this is the kind of car you've got to at least drive, isn't it? See what the fuss is about. Next up, Aerial Atom 4. That's the very latest iteration of the Aerial Atom. Um, obviously, it's a stunning car for the track. I think you can get them up to about 300 horsepower. I mean, quite ridiculous, really. Now, this one's um, 56,500. <clears throat> quite near where I'd expect I'll be happy to pick the car up for. I mean, <laughs> basically, it's just like a miniature Formula 1 car, isn't it? Well, certainly a track special. But, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. If you're going to wear, wear it, if you're, going to, if you're going to drive this on the road, you need to wear a motorcycle helmet. I don't think even uh, goggles enough. Okay, you protect your eyes, but you might get stone chips on your face. And with a face as good as this, I don't want to ruin it. So, uh, yeah, look at that. Proper bit of kit, isn't it? Uh, next up, and I might remove this, but me and the missus have always wanted one because we've got Aston Martin garage right near us. And it's the only Aston Martin that actually I kind of really want. Because they're so near us, they're literally about 500 yards away. We see them all the time. That makes them less special to me. Mostly it's the same with normal BMWs. But uh, basically, <laughs> Signet is taking the... Is it Toyota Ignis or something? Oh, something like that. I can't remember. And uh, they Aston Martin took it. Kept the uh, undercarriage suspension engine the same, unfortunately. But rebodied it. New wheels. Give it the Aston Martin paint job. It's one of the best in the industry. It, it's done like multiple times. Incredible finish. And they've done the whole interior. So it's, it's a fascinating little car. Of course, it's perfect for a run around. And that's something me and the missus quite fancy. Just pop into to go around the shops or little journeys rather than taking a, an expensive gas guzzling car that you really don't want to be taking on short journeys. So we're very much minded to get a small car. And if you're going to go for a small car, why not one well, of the smallest car? As an Aston Martin. Next on the list, now the Quattro, only one for sale. This is the UR Quattro, not the short well base, but obviously it's got those integrally light or golf rally flared wheel arches. Great rally history. Um, you may know I did have an integrally Evo 2. I'm actually mint one in yellow condition, probably worth 80 to 100 grand now. I've actually got a picture of it right in front of me, still on my computer, still in the great cast I've ever had. Um, Funnily enough, spoiler alert, that's coming up. But, uh, yeah, great little car, huge history. Who wouldn't want to drive one of those? Next up, of all the R8s, and I've never even driven one, I'd have to get a manual Spider, pretty much what I did with my Ferrari, and a V10. Um, it's just going to be more special than the V8. In my opinion, it's got an amazing sound, very much akin to the Guiardo uh, or Hurricane, that sort of V8, sorry, that V10 sound. Fantastic. A manual, because it's more special, and they're rarer. So a manual Spider is the kind of rarest variation of the Audi R8 of that era. Of course, I'm pretty sure I don't do manuals anymore anyway. I think it's all DCT, isn't it? Uh, after that one, 
still in the alphabet of Claude, BMW Z4M. Now, not this is again pretty rare, and you may another car you may not even be aware of. But uh, look at this. So it's kind of got a typical old Z4 front, not the prettiest front in the world, but the side is amazing. It's just again, it's a car that really stands out. Brilliantly powered M engine, full M BMW, but that back, look at how it stands out. Unbelievable. Let's get the back here. Look at that, look. <laughs> oh dear. So just a really funky car. You can get it for about 25 to 30 grand. So that's on my list as well. Next up, the only other BMW that I really, really want uh, is a BMW M3 E30 model. So let's have a look at this one. Seeing it in black is not the best way to see its curves. But again, it's got the flared wheel arches. They all have the spoiler at the back. Another piece of motoring history very much used in touring car racing and other group racing awesome little bmw highly desirable highly expensive this is the one i might struggle to to find a, a cheap enough version because they sell between such a big range and evolution sell even more so it's difficult to find one i believe i can get in and out of without losing money uh corvette not not a massive fan of the new corvettes Quite, must be quite like a Stingray, but the Corvette I'll be after is this one, which is, I might have to substitute this for a Yaris GR, because this is going to be so hard to get, and there's one for sale here, and it's a 91, I want a 59 or 60, 91, 61, I want a 59 or 60, because I prefer that version, with a special, certain grille, shark teeth grille, it's still got the four lights set up, still got the four lights at the back, but it's different, smoother, like the one on uh, the black one, have you seen that on the TV series Lucifer? Such a cool car, such a cool car driving around this. It's, I think it's the best, uh, I think it's the sexiest American car ever made. The whole window you see there is curved, wouldn't want to break that window. And the cockpit, it's like twin cockpit, you see the line down here. And the whole thing is kind of curved around you. Fantastic. Next up. Ferrari 458 Spider, but only in Giello Triplo Strato, which is a metallic yellow colour. I did take one out in that, didn't have sport seats, ended up going for the 430 Spider. Manual just felt more special to me. The whole experience was better, but 458 is still an amazing, amazing car, a fantastic Ferrari. So on the back of that, one of the best cars ever. Price is going to be interesting, 155, 160. At the moment, they're a bit of flux. Some of these Ferraris now are starting to take a little dip due to the current conditions uh, and, a, and the financial ability of a lot of people has changed, especially with interest rates going up. Finance is now much harder to achieve. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I've got this one up. It's a picture of a yellow strata. It seems what it looks like. It's like a really amazing metallic yellow. It, in the flesh, it's unbelievable. Uh, next up, another Ferrari is, of course, the FF. Always like this car. I've got one behind me and there's a model. So it's the four-seater original V12 front-engined uh, Ferrari. Uh, at the time it came out, people were in uproar about it. Oh, my God, a family Ferrari, what's going on? With four proper seats, two adult seats to Mac, not two plus two. Obviously, it was then replaced by the GTC4 Lusso, but... That's another 20 odd grand more. I'm very happy to get an original V12, and I certainly want the later V8, which is in GTC Lusso, because why would you? Next up, the last Ferrari is the F12 Berlinetta. It's starting to see these below 150,000. Amazing car, super fast, super powerful. 700 odd dogs, but I mean, unbelievable. Looks the dog's bollocks. Love to get it in yellow strato chip low there. But I'll settle for dark grey. This is the kind of Ferrari where any colour looks okay in it. It doesn't matter what it is. Even white, blue, yellow, black, all of the greys, not a problem. Um, I can't very much looking forward to driving and owning for a period of time. That one I might own for a year, but I'll obviously put up a sell straight away to achieve a similar price. Next up, we go into some Jaguars. Uh, I've only got the one Jaguar. Have I got? No, I've got two. F-Type. Always wanted an F-Type. As soon as I saw it, the first time in life, I thought, oh my God, what a stunningly gorgeous, attractive, pretty car. I was going to get one. Absolutely going to get one. Drove one a couple of times. I was going to get an SVR with a V8 engine. 
which sounds mad, <laughs> pops and crackles like a beast, a bit embarrassing, but hey-ho. Um, and then the Amira lo launched, announced, and I put deposits on that, as you will know, eventually up buying one, I've still got it, and that kind of moved the F-Type out of my thoughts, because I think the Amira beats it in practically every single way, uh, even in looks. Uh, it's pretty close, but I still want to own one, so I will come in and out of one of those. You have a Jaguar, super, super rare, XKRS. So this is the 2 plus 2 car that came before the F-Type, but it came with the, the bonus of those two extra small seats at the back. Similar engine, similar sounds, cracking car. Next up, Lamborghinis. Right, I still haven't ever driven a Lamborghini. I always said that, if, well, I always said I wouldn't drive a Ferrari until I own it, but actually, Curiosity got the better of me and I drove a few before I bought mine. Lamborghini, I've still never driven one. Sat in a few, never driven one. I've... I've never even been in one. Never even been in one that's moving. Wow. Because I'm trying to really, until I own one. So this, I'm, I want to I own one. I want to say I've owned one. And uh, I'll probably start off with one of these free cars you're going to come into next. The obvious one is the Gallardo. That's the first obvious one for me to get. Either getting into a, a cheaper Spider, which you can get around sixty-five thousand. I'm looking at the price of this one, but it's got like some proper high mileage, or a Superleggera or Performante Spider. They're the ones all the carbon inside, slightly more desirable, and they're really about. I've got looked to get one of those for about hundred, hundred and five thousand. But next up, Murcielago. To me, still one of the prettiest Lamborghinis, and Lamborghinis aren't pretty. Mostly just purposeful. But Lamborghini somehow made it mean, but still retaining some inherently good looks. Not just like, oh my God, it's Lamborghini looks. Murciano go. Not a car I want to keep for too long. Um, might be one I just drive a Notto. I'm not sure I've got the um, the cojones to own one. Because if it goes wrong, it's going to be seriously expensive. And uh, make a dent in my dreams. I'm not actually uh, well off. I've just got this pot of money for a pension that I'm using to satiate my dreams of driving great cars. So Murciela goes up there, stunning car. You don't need to show you it, you've all seen it. And then an Aventador. I've been looking at Hurricane as well, but I put the Aventador in there first because it's a different experience. It's got the upwind doors, V12, silly fast, amazing noise. It's the full blown, full beans Lamborghini experience. Again, it's kind of a Lamborghini you've got out at one point. They're coming below 170,000. If I can snipe one up for 165, have it for a month or two, and then get out of it, I'll be a very happy person. Don't forget, as I go through all these cars, eventually I'm going to go back and perhaps buy a car out of all of these I think is the best car. I'm doing a scoring out of 100 in the spreadsheet. And that's really going to be down to me. I'm not going to go into detail about it, but it's going to be how it makes me feel, how it actually drives, how I think it's a car that I, I couldn't live without. And that's going to, that's going to make be a factor in what the score is nearer to 100. You're going to get a lot of 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, probably one or two 90s. Certainly when I get 100, because that means I basically I couldn't even have sold it. Right, where was I? Uh, Ventador. Uh, next up, uh, another Integrale. I mean, I love Integrale. I love Integrales. So I had one, as I said, had a Mint 2. And phenomenal car. Italians, I don't know how they do it. They have a, have a deal with the devil, or they've got some little pixies or... Leprechauns, well, from leprechauns in Italy, but <laughs> what do you call them? Gremlins, little wizards. I kind of picture the Warwick Davis character in Harry Potter. They work them overnight, elves. When the elf elves have gone to bed and gone home, they come back onto the car and do some sort of magic. It's the same with Ferrari, same with most Lamborghinis, and this Integrale, it's just incredibly special. If you ever get a chance to drive one, drive one properly or, or own one because then you get to know it better a short drive like driving the mirror doesn't do it justice you just think oh it's it's a bit slow and you've really got to push it through it paces that last like 15 percent and then the car is just like oh my god it's it's an experience it's like your whole life changes it really is it's weird you obviously got to be a pot petrol head but you will get it fantastic car like the only one again um because the last time i own was 20 years ago Whoop. So, uh, yeah, I've got to try it again. I've got to try it again. And it might be a car that I keep. It's, that that car's going to be near 100 for me, emotionally. But I've got to be more subjective. And now it's 20 years later. I've driven some fabulous cars, 
fabulous modern cars, faster cars, better road holding cars, it won't have the same effect, but let's see. Now the only McLaren I've put in there so far, I'm not a massive lover of McLarens, never found them massively pretty or massively desirable. That's just me, I don't know what it is. Probably, again, I lived in Woking and I saw McLarens a lot. It, that is probably a factor, but I've never designed them over the Italians. So for me, the one that makes obvious sense is an LT, uh, just a fabulous driver's car. They're all good. I've gone in with a 600 because it's, it's a little bit cheaper. It's in my budget. You know, I'm struggling. I don't think I can get a 675 in my budget of about 118 total to buy multiple cars or one at any one time. But uh, yeah, 600 LT, cracking car. <laughs> I think it, look, it does look better in the 570 series. I think the 720 looks the nuts. But obviously, I, 720S, yes. <laughs> oh, I could get into it. And I still might, rather than this, or both. I don't know, but uh, LT makes a lot of sense to me. It's the kind of car that I think will satisfy me. Next up, a Goldwing SLS. Difficult to get hold of in a spec I want for a price I want, because the price has now mo moved away from me. I can't get this without finance. I don't really want to get any finance, because that's complicated, and it eats into my margin of being able to get in and out of the car. <sighs> but if I can snipe on auction, Maybe big risk if the gearbox is wrong, it's a 30 grand replacement. Uh, well, it was that a couple of years ago, it might be worse now. All the costs have gone up, but just an amazing car. It's got a similar engine to the Edition 507, funnily enough, all the exact same engine. But obviously, with those gold wing doors, that fabulously long bonnet, not massively keen on the back, but at least it's smooth like the Bentleys. Look at that, I mean, what a beast of a car, isn't it? But uh, for me, I don't know what you think, I'd go for silver with red. But uh, silver with black isn't bad, and black with red leather might be okay for me so if I'm not keeping it. Other than, other than that, I wouldn't get a black car. It's a nightmare to keep clean. Here we go, the Porsches. For me, I've always liked a Targa 4S, the 997 version. So it's got a Metzger engine, so you've got a bit more of a raw experience, a bit more like our Porsche should be. And it looks incredible. So if I bring one up for you, so you can see what I'm talking about. I think it's the best looking 911 ever. It's it's decluttered. I mean, they put a spoiler up here. I wouldn't do that. I like it without, without a spoiler down. But it's such a pretty original shape. It's got the S body, so it's wider. It comes with this little aluminium strip here. And it's got the full glass panoramic and a moving glass sunroof that goes underneath the back of the glass. I just think, it, to me, I just always love this 911. Uh, to me, this is, the for me, the greatest 911. <laughs> but saying that, of course, I've got to have a GT3. Um, I might be able to get into a GT3 RS and a 997, maybe even 991, but I think a GT3 will be enough to satiate my curiosity in this car and how it feels on the road, because really I'm driving these on the road. I'm not really going to take any of them on the track, or I might do, um, certainly for the content and the experience. This is a car that I would take on the track. Air Latin, obviously, I'd take on the track. And a number of them I might also follow that up with. But uh, now I like this one. Straight off the bat. Um, I'm just waiting for some money to come in. But this, cobalt blue. The wheels look good. Wouldn't normally go for that colour. But with this blue colour, I think it looks amazing. Fantastic colour. Decent mileage. Looks like it's really clean inside and out. You obviously have to worry about things... In the engine, you can get checked out beforehand. I think um, 997 Targa 4S, you've really got to check that um, the cylinders for scoring, they call it ball scoring, and that the IMS bearing is absolutely fine, especially depends on the year it is. I don't think either of those are particularly an issue with the GT3. I think they use a different engine and changed it. Might be wrong. Something I looked into as I start looking at buying one. But uh, right now, I, I, I'm very close to picking up or putting an offering 80,000. Well, I don't think I can go wrong. And last of all, but I might change this for the Clio V6 or the Aris GR and keep the um, Corvette in. Have to excuse me, a bit of a, a bit of an artistic license there. Um, Renault 5 Turbo 1 or 2. Now, these are pretty mad looking cars. Engine in the back, so it's the precursor to the V6 Clio. But now these are getting silly expensive. That back view, look at that, just absolutely mad. Another kind of Group B derived car. Just absolute nutter, the steering wheel comes off. I remember I was outside TGI's in Common Garden, 
I'm not sure it's there anymore, and uh, parked up and geezer got out. Took the steering with him. That's not a bad deterrent, is it? Although if someone could lift your car away, but wicked. So, but they're starting to get silly money. So I might have to go for something else. Right, so that is the 25 cars. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, which of those cars you'll definitely be in your 25? Which cars do you think I'm missing? Which cars out of those and the models do you think I've just... It's not, it'd be silly for me to even buy it. I think I'm not going to get in and out of it. My pricing number not buy, unrealistic. Let's just see what your thoughts are. But right now, give or take two cars. That is the list. But I'll put in... Um, in here, just so we see it separately. Uh, Clio V6. Yaris GR, which might replace the uh, Turbo one. And the Corvette. Right, brilliant. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to see this series play out. Obviously, it's going to, it's going to take me a couple of years. But um, I'm hoping to do a couple of cars a month. Um, and I'm starting pretty much now. So, uh, yeah, keep watching. And let's hope uh, this becomes a bit of a laugh. Uh, don't lose money on it. Something's bound to go wrong in one or two of the cars, isn't it? I'm going to get it. It's going to go like, poof. And uh, I'm going to lose money in it. But hopefully I can make that with a couple of other cars. Um, hopefully this whole experience doesn't cost me silly money. Because really I should put in this money I've got into buying a property and renting it out. But uh, hey, you know me by now. I'm just a massive petrol head. I've got to do this. I've got to do this while I can. You've got one opportunity. I'm going for it. On that note, right, drive safe, ride safe out there, aid out.